all struck by the, by the number of folks. Uh, ladies and gentlemen, please um, uh, let me back up one here. Good morning. I am John Taylor, the Deputy Director of the AMC Museum, and I will be your Master of Ceremonies for today. On behalf of all of us at Dover Air Force Base, I'd like to welcome you to today's event, transferring C-5A Galaxy 9014 from the Tennessee Air National Guard into the Air Mobility Command Museum. Being an old C-5 maintainer for 23 years is a very proud part of my life. I am also equally as proud today to be able to share this magnificent aircraft with you. This morning I was thinking about just a little story of how I can equate what we as museum personnel feel about this air aircraft and the only thing I could think of was little Johnny and little Sally when they first got their first bike, first toy. They wanted to share it with everybody, most everybody, and that's pretty much how we feel. We are so grateful today to have this aircraft here and to be able to share it with you. As a reminder, please turn off all cell phones and pagers at this time. To help us recognize the importance of this ceremony, we are joined today by a number of special and distinguished guests. U.S. Senator for Delaware, the Honorable Tom Carver. U.S. Senator for Delaware, the Honorable Christopher Coons. <laughs> Delaware Congressman, the Honorable John Carney. <laughs> Delaware State Representative, the Honorable Jeff Spiegelman. The Mayor, City of Dover, the Honorable Carlton Carey. The Deputy Chief Magistrate, Kent County, the Honorable Ernst Arndt and his wife, Lee. Our other distinguished guests include the Commander, 436th Airlift Wing, Colonel Richard Moore and his wife, Kristen. The commander, 512th Airlift Wing, Colonel Raymond Kozak, and his wife, Maureen. The command chief, 436th Airlift Wing, Chief Master Sergeant James Smith, and his wife, Cindy. Chief Master Sergeant Retired, and his wife, Donna. Rodney Moore from the 512th Aircraft Maintenance Squadron. Chief Moore was the young Staff Sergeant Crew Chief in 1974 when 9014 performed the famous missile drop. Rodney Moore and his wife Donna. <laughs> Mr. Jeff Milshawkey, the Director of Field Heritage Programs, Headquarters Air Mobility Command. Most importantly, we'd like to thank all of the volunteers and board members that make this the number one attraction in Dover, according to TripAdvisor, and the number one free cultural attraction in Delaware, according to Delaware State Tourism. Finally, we welcome everyone who shares a connection to the C-5 and our aviation history who has taken time out of their busy schedule today to share in this special occasion. Before the transfer ceremony begins, we are privileged to have a few remarks for both of our senators. Tom Carper helped us reopen the museum when we moved here from the other side of base in 1996 when he was just a young governor. <laughs> Senator Carper?
Now I'm just a young, recovering governor. <laughs> Colonels, Chief, Michael, John, uh, honor guests. How many are from Delaware? How many actually live in Delaware? Do you have anybody here from uh, Maryland? Do you have anybody here from Pennsylvania? Do you have anybody here from New Jersey? Do you have anybody here who was born in West Virginia? <laughs> anybody here from Virginia? All right. Anybody from New York? Anybody from outside the United States? Yes. <laughs> a little girl back here. You're not telling the truth. <laughs> what a glorious day. What a glorious day to be here with Chris, my colleague in the Senate, with John, with our mayor, former mayors, uh, ladies and uh, gentlemen. How many of you have ever served in uh, an active duty in the military? Raise your hand. Put our hands together for them. Once in a while. How many ever spent any time in a uh, C5, not on the ground, but in the air? Put our hands together for them, too. How many of you ever tried to, uh, to pre-fly to C5 or tried to go somewhere and it wouldn't go? Raise your hand. <laughs> That's happened to me a time or two on the AVP-3. I first landed here at uh, this base in uh, 19, uh, I guess 1969. I was an incident in the Navy trying to get to uh, Baltimore with my best friend, South Syria. We were going through the uh, Naval uh, Flight Officer Training uh, Program. And we uh, hitch rides up here uh, with the Air Force. We're on CSU 141s. Coming out of Corpus Christi, San Antonio, Charleston, and into uh, to here. Landed about this time in the morning. Beautiful morning, kind of like, uh, like today. And I, like I said, you know, I think when I get out of the Navy, I might want to come back to a place that's beautiful. And I never imagine I'd be standing here in front of all of you with a uh, a brand new old C5A, 0-1-4, is that it? 0 one four. Here, say 0 one four. Yeah. Welcome home. Welcome home. This is where you belong. This is the Air Force, best Air Force base in the world. And it is. Let me come back. We're not just a one-trick pony here. I mean, year after year. Finalists for a Grand uh, Chief Award. And I just want to say to everybody who has made that possible, who continues to make that possible, Thank you very, very much, Chef, for your we work. We're trying to call that Colonel. We have the Chief. So chief I just want to say to everybody, uh, active duty, reserve, officer enlisted, families, everybody that supports this, uh, this team, civilians, uh, this is a great day. We're just enormously proud of all of you. Uh, I, uh, I love the C-5. And people say, uh, why do you love the C-5? Well, I love the fact that it gives us the ability to go where we need to go around the world with a lot of people, a lot of equipment, all at once. A bunch of the bases that I used to fly into and out of, and you did too, uh, years ago back in, uh, I was on active duty for 68 to 73. Uh, they're not open anymore. They're not open anymore. And we need uh, the ability to move a lot of people, a lot of equipment, in a hurry. And uh, these planes used to do it. And uh, C5A, we have one C5A C5 that's been uh, modernized. It's called the C5M. We have a bunch of uh, C5Bs that have been modernized. Chris and John and I continue to support the, the modernization program. Uh, one of those set in one day, in one flight, 42 world records about a year, year and a half ago. And it was an old C5B turned into a C5M. We got a lot of miles left on now on these planes. A lot of miles left on this plane right here on the ground. It's going to give a lot of pleasure, a lot of joy, and a lot of folks from all over the world that come here in the future. I'll close with this. The, as Chris and John know, and the governor knows, Jack Martell knows, one of the uh, top three, one of the top three uh, foundations, if you will, for our economy in Delaware is tourism. People come from here all over the world to go to five-star beaches. There are ten five-star beaches in America. Three of them are in Delaware. Think about that. People come here from, uh, from all over the world to visit places up, up, uh, up north, and including Winter. And they're going to be coming from all over the world to visit our national park. We're going to get one of those. We're getting pretty close to, uh, to that. The other thing that people are going to come, they come here from Dover Downs. They come here to visit our capital and all that. They come here to come to see the very first state that ratified the Constitution about four miles from where we're sitting. And more and more in the future, folks should come here to this museum, to visit this museum, to go back into the past and see what's going on into the future with the, the active duty and reserve force. I'm enormously proud. I'm going to say to everybody who's, I think we have maybe two people, two people who provide like full-time, maybe paid uh, leadership on, on this project. And, and I, uh, I want to thank you. We've got about 160 guys, only about 160 volunteers. Let's put our hands together for them as well. Maybe when you do something really great, the Navy do something really great, we have uh, two words that we say. They are bravo, zulu. 
Bravo, Zulu. How many of you say bravo? Bravo. Zulu. Zulu. Bravo. Bravo. Zulu. 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 Great job. Congratulations. Thank you. Thank you, Senator Carper. And now we will uh, have a few words from Senator Chris Coons. Senator Coons. What a glorious day. You know, there have only ever been 131 C5s built. And like my senior senator, they've got a lot more miles to go. Like my senior senator, who as a young governor helped open the Air Mobility Command, uh, this is something that continues to have promise and continues to have miles to go. I am grateful to everybody in the Air Force who made possible the donation of this unique piece of American aviation history. And as I'm sure you'll hear in more detail, it was not just part of the fleet of C-5s that supported missions um, here from Dover, but all over the world. Missions during wartime, missions of humanitarian relief, missions almost, on almost literally every continent and under almost every possible flying condition. So I just want to say briefly, to the men and women who make the Air Mobility Command run and possible, not just as a site for tourism, but as a site for engagement and for education and for inspiration, thank you. It is a big piece of America's history, and that makes it an important piece of America's future. And to the men and women here who are veterans, thank you. Thank you for your service. And thank you for having done something great with your lives. The opportunity to gather here with young people and to walk them through this awe-inspiring piece of machinery and for them to be reminded by the interpretive displays inside it of the awe-inspiring actions of service by the men and women who supported, who serviced, and who flew these planes is a great contribution to our community and our country. Thank you, and God bless. Thank you, Senator Coons. And now a special presentation from Representative Jeff Spiegelman. Shaven, and yet uh, Mike Meister here, John, uh, I didn't see Jim, but, and many of the other uh, volunteers and staff, uh, they welcomed me, and that just shows uh, the spirit of this place, the spirit uh, that this creates. Uh, it, it really does have a special place. Uh, it's why so many volunteers spend so much time and so much hard work here at this museum. Uh, the C-5 here is not just a celebration of, of having an aircraft at a museum. It's the celebration of having a very special aircraft at a very special place. And might I just say, Mike, it's about time. <laughs> I have here a house tribute from the House of Representatives of the state of Delaware. Be it hereby known to all that the House of Representatives acknowledges the Air Mobility Command Museum C-5 Galaxy exhibit. C-5 Galaxy has graced the skies of Delaware for more than 40 years. And the AMC Museum is privileged to be the only museum in the world who have a C-5 Galaxy on display the next 10 years. 9014 was the first right from the factory C-5 delivered to Dover Air Force Base in August 1971. After short assignments at other bases, it was stationed here again from 1973 to 1977. In 1974, 9014 became the only aircraft ever to launch an ICBM from in-flight. The AMC Museum is the number one attraction in Kent County, according to TripAdvisor, the number one free cultural attraction in Delaware, according to the State Tourism Office, and the only museum in the United States dedicated to military airlift and air refueling aircraft. The House of Representatives extends its sincere congratulations, and I add my sincere congratulations and my sincere thanks to the staff and the volunteers here at Air Mobility Command Museum. I direct this tribute to be presented on this day, the 9th of November, 2013. Thank you very much. 
Thank, Thank you, Representative Spiegelman and uh, Representative Kenton. All of you must know that maintainers actually own the aircraft. We only loan them to the flight crews to fly their missions. So now I'd like to invite up Chief Master Sergeant Sanford Strunk of the 164th Maintenance Group who will turn over the aircraft forms to Mr. Michael Leister, the director of the AMC Museum and a former C-5 crew chief. Chief Strunk and Mr. Leister. Thank you, Chief. Next time, I'd like to invite the, the director of the Air Mobility Command Museum, Mr. Michael Leister, to make a few comments. Good morning. Thank you, everybody. Over 25 years ago, when this museum was less than a year old, we had one wrecked airplane and about half as much space as is inside this airplane. We submitted a list to higher headquarters of aircraft we wanted for that new museum, which at the time was called the Dover Air Force Base Historical Center. We sent the list up to headquarters. They kind of chuckled at it when they saw a C-5 on there. <laughs> Time has marched on. The C-5 is still the mainstay of our heavy lift fleet. Pretty soon, the roar and whine of the old TF-39 engines on the legacy A model C-5 will be gone forever, replaced by the purr of the C-5M model that you can't even hear fly by half the time. Time marches on, but this aircraft deserves to be preserved. On a personal note, in 1970, I was a brand new airman fresh out of tech school I'd gone to aircraft fighter tech school, so naturally my first assignment was this. <laughs> I was fortunate enough to go through the very first class of airmen 
at Charleston Air Force Base in the C-5 Maintenance School. The airplane has been a blessing and occasionally a curse. It is a wonderful, capable airplane, but you got to learn to love it. I would like to thank and dedicate this airplane to every flight crew, ground crew, and support crew member who's ever worked on it, supported it in any way. I'd like to uh, thank especially our dedicated volunteers that come in here and work to keep the doors open and keep these airplanes looking the best of any static display airplanes in the Air Force. I'd like to thank our partners downtown at Ken County Tourism who work with us all the time to keep this in the forefront so visitors can come see this grand piece of aviation. I can't list everybody that does everything around here. We'd be here tomorrow, but there's four people I cannot overlook. First is Mr. John Taylor, your narrator today. The deputy director of this museum. He not only keeps the place running, but when we had to tow 19 airplanes in one day, and Colonel, I think that's a record. I don't think the other side of the case has ever done that. We towed 19 airplanes in one day, and John was out there towing and moving and, and facilitating and doing everything. He's awesome, truly. Master Sergeant Les Polly, right there. He's our chief of maintenance here, and his job is to keep 32 airplanes taken care of, one guy. And he has to do it by using retired colonels and retired chiefs <laughs> and keep them from fighting and, and keep them safe because they want to get the job done. He does an excellent job. He was out here on his day off yesterday. He's out here on his day off today, too. Les, thank you hugely for everything you do. We have lots of volunteers work on lots of things, but I have to thank Silas Steffen. He is the crew chief of that immaculate KC-135. He's already got one airplane he takes care of and polishes, but he has been out here since this airplane landed, keeping track of what's going on. He's painted panels that need a little touch-up. He's replaced the anti-skid on the ramp. He was here 14 hours in one day. He gets overtime for that, but it's the same rate that we pay the rest of our volunteers. <laughs> I've got to thank him very much because he's done a, a tremendous job on this airplane and on his KC-135. And I need to thank Mr. Hal Sellers. He's our graphic artist. You'll see how it works when you go inside the airplane. He does all the science in the museum, but the thing is, we had a very short time frame get all of the artwork and signage done inside this airplane. Uh, he has been tireless. We thank him for that. From this day forward, we get to share this magnificent airplane with all of you. I hope you're as impressed as I have been. Thanks for coming and thanks for supporting your AMC Museum. Thanks, Mike. At this time, I'd like to invite the commander of the 436th Airlift Wing, Colonel Rick Moore, and Colonel John Kelly, the commander of the 164th Maintenance Group, the Tennessee Air National Guard, to come forward. Colonel Moore will accept the ceremonial key to the aircraft from Colonel Kelly. Thank you, sirs. Uh, next, I'd like to invite the commander of the 164th Maintenance Group, Colonel John Kelly, forward to make a few remarks. Senators, congressmen, distinguished guests, it's an honor and a privilege for me to be here today. Participate in this ceremony on a unique occasion when we witness the retirement of the story aircraft that served the Air Force and the country extremely well for 42 years. Our Wing Commander, Colonel Mark Devine, sends his regrets 
His responsibilities following the sudden death of our guard family uh, demand his presence in Memphis. On that note, I ask that you please keep our command chief, Master Sergeant Cedric Young, and his family in your prayers following the untimely death of his wife, Alana. The C-5 will always hold a special place in the hearts and minds of Memphis Airmen. It was our wing's honor to fly the aircraft 014 during its last years of service. Like many galaxies in the fleet, it wore several tail flashes before the Memphis Red Tail. Before we got it, it was assigned to Dover, Charleston, Travis, Altus, back to Travis, Blackwood, finally his last year in Memphis. Shortly after receiving the jet, our Lockheed Tech rep came to me. His name is Craig Tao. He told me, you're not going to believe the, the story. This aircraft actually launched an ICBM. And like many others, uh, I had the same reaction. You've got to be kidding me. <laughs> you must be joking, Craig. But he showed me the YouTube video. And then my reaction was, cool, when can we do it again? <laughs> what a remarkable testament to the innovative spirit and resourcefulness of our Air Force. Now, our wing has just two C-5s left. How much more space do you have here? <laughs> we have embarked full throttle on our future, operating the C-17 Globemaster in combat missions only, miss only months after the first one arrived in Memphis. As we finalize our third unit conversion in three decades, it's fitting to reflect on the flexibility this aircraft has provided us since our conversion from C-141s in 2004. In just eight short years, Guardsmen plunged into action during Hurricane Katrina and Rita relief efforts, operations enduring freedom, Iraqi freedom, new dawn, and multiple surge operations. Now, as our country pivots from Iraq and Afghanistan, it provides a symmetrical end for our unit and transitions our wing to a new beginning. We will always be proud of our service to the nation with the C-5 Galaxy. Aircraft 014 safely transported airmen and guardsmen for nearly 20,000 flight hours, delivered hope around the globe, and thus while the Tennessee Air National Guard forges boldly into our future, it will be uniquely special to know a piece of aviation history is adorned with a Memphis tail flash, for now, uh, <laughs> here at Dover Air Museum. Thank you for inviting us, and thank you uh, for this day. God bless you. Thank you, Colonel Kelly. I would now like to invite our Wing Commander, Colonel Richard Moore, forward to make some comments. Well, good morning. Uh, certainly, I'm surprised by the crowd. Uh, this is an outstanding validation of what we do here. Uh, this is uh, not a museum that we maintain for us. We maintain it for you. That's why uh, the fence has been reconfigured since 9-11, is to provide access to the public. We're honored that you're here. Uh, we're honored to serve as your host. And we hope you'll come again anytime you'd like to come. Uh, I'd like to thank the members of the delegation for being here. Uh, only in the state of Delaware would an event like this draw the entire Delaware delegation uh, as well as the mayor. It really is true. Uh, wherever you see two airmen rubbing sticks together, you'll also see the mayor of Dover, uh, <laughs> Mayor Gary. So thank you for your continued support. Uh, to the members of the 164th, uh, we're honored to accept this piece of Air Force heritage from you. Uh, we're thrilled with the care that you've taken of it, uh, and we will probably uh, maintain your unit's heritage as a part of this aircraft. Uh, we will not maintain the red tail flash for a particularly long time, uh, but neither will we put an over tail flash on this aircraft. This aircraft will, uh, when it's complete, wear the back tail flash that it wore when it arrived here in 1971 with 26.9 flight hours on it and a new car smell. <laughs> As we now celebrate the 42-year career of this Air Force veteran, six PCSs, and now one final whole record move to Dover, when this aircraft landed on the 7th of August, those 26.9 flight hours had grown to 19,735.1. So, 
we're, we're honored to maintain this as a part of our Air Force heritage. This place is not a, an excuse for us to celebrate past glories. Rather, it is a place for us to honor the heritage of which we are truly proud and also dedicated. Uh, as Senator Coons mentioned, in celebrating our heritage, we're also preparing for the future. So this is an opportunity for us to remind those that are yet to come that when these aircraft were built, the engineers that built them and the airmen that flew them would have no idea what they were doing 42 years later. Likewise, the aircraft that we maintain today will have missions in the future that we have not even thought of. The way that we can prepare for those missions is by raising well-led, well-trained, well-cared-for airmen who will be able to improvise when the puzzle changes and solve it without a moment's notice. So uh, thanks to all of you who are here today. We're honored to, uh, to induct this aircraft into the Air Mobility Command Museum. Uh, it is truly a part of mobility history and now will be on display for your pleasure for the rest of our lives. Thank you very much. Thank you very much. I would now like to ask the official party to come up to the forward ramp while the AMC Museum Corps staff cuts the ribbon, officially opening C5A9014 to all of our museum visitors. Ladies and gentlemen, that concludes our ceremony on behalf of the Air Mobility Command Museum. Thank you all for attending. Please join us in the C-5 cargo compartment to look around. We will have tour guides around to answer any questions, but it will be a bit too crowded to conduct any tours. Tours of the flight deck will be conducted via the air stairs on my left. They will be limited to groups of 15 at a time. Please share some cake and punch, compliments of the AMC Museum Foundation being served in the cargo department. Again, thank you for coming and enjoy your day.